name is Dana. I'm one of the yoga instructors here at Pavilion Landing. And our class today is going to be um, a beginner's vinyasa yoga class. We're going to be exploring the foundations of downward facing dog. So, very foundational pose to any vinyasa class that you take. But as a beginner, I know for myself, I really struggled with this pose. Very difficult to execute it well, to make it comfortable, um, to get the sensation that you're supposed to be feeling in it, rather than focusing on the shape that we see on Instagram or, or wherever you might see it. So to begin our practice, I'm gonna have everyone begin in Shavasana. So lay on your mat, have your head towards the back of your mat. And once you lay down, once you lay down, have your heels wider than your hips. Allow the feet to flop out to the sides. Arms are about 45 degrees away from the body and kind of smush your shoulder blades underneath your upper back. Palms are face up. And here, typically what we would do is to center our practice. So connect with the breath. Try to tune out distractions. And especially for a vinyasa practice, you're gonna to want to figure out your boundaries for breath. So while you're laying here, I want you to pull your belly button towards your spine. And as you do that, this is gonna give you a more clear, a more clear boundary for where to send your inhale. So as you engage your core, you're gonna feel this boundary as you inhale at the base of your rib cage. So that's where I want your breaths to go as we go throughout the practice. Not a belly breath, engagement of the core, and then this nice empowered thoracic breath. Okay. Also here, let's bring a rhythm and more of a mindful um, rhythm to the breath. So instead of just having your natural inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, let's try to find a four count beat. So four count inhale, sending breath all the way down to the base of the rib cage, and then a four count exhale as you follow the breath out through the throat and finally out the nose or the mouth. Okay. Let's just take about four more breaths here. this calm before our practice to help us be mindful and have a certain level of body awareness. And what I mean by that is not round your back to bring your hands down to the floor, but rather keep a long extended spine, bring your hands down to the floor. On your next inhale, draw your hands back towards you so that you can peek at the horizon. Exhale, push the hands away, sweep the hands out to the side. Inhale, raise the arms up overhead, raise the gaze. And exhale, bring the hands down to heart center. Okay, we're gonna add on. Inhale, raise the arms, raise the gaze. This time, exhale, land your left hand on the mat and side bend to the left, really reaching your fingertips on the right hand for the ceiling. And try not to let this 
this right hand fall to the front. Keep it directly above your ear. Okay? On your next inhale, bring the torso back to vertical, raise the other arm. And then on your next exhale, right hand comes to left knee. Left fingertips come behind you. Take a little shoulder roll here. With your inhales, I want you to sit up tall, and with your exhales, twist just a little bit to the left. Okay? Very subtle seated twist. No need to crank into this. We want to maintain the integrity of the spine. So sitting up tall. Let's take one more exhale, just a little bit more of a twist. And then inhale to release your twist. Exhale, bring your hands to your sides. And then inhale, raise the arms, raise the gaze. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Here we go, right back up. Inhale, raise the arms, raise the gaze. This time, exhale, land your right hand on the mat. Side bend to the right, reaching those left fingertips up and to the right. Trying not to fall forward here. Staying mindful of where you are in space. On an inhale, torso comes back to vertical, raise the right arm. This time, exhale, left hand to right knee, right fingertips come behind you, little shoulder roll. Inhale to sit up tall, and then exhale to twist a little bit to the right. Very subtle. Very slow increments. And then when you reach the end of your range of motion, on an inhale, release your twist. Exhale, bring both hands to the sides. Inhale, raise the arms, raise the gaze. And exhale, hands come down to heart center. All right, from where you guys are, you are going to draw your heels towards you and then roll over your knees and come to a tabletop position. So tabletop is a very foundational pose for a beginner's vinyasa class. So always, whenever I say tabletop, I mean, I want your hips to be directly over your knees and your hands to be directly underneath your shoulders. And not with the hands like this. Fingers spread really wide, even weight distribution. And then draw your belly button to your spine. So we don't want to have you sag here. Draw belly button to spine, actively press away from the mat. Now we're going to do some cat cows. So since this is our first round of them, keep them subtle, keep them gentle. And when we do them again, you can explore your range of motion a little bit more. So on your next inhale, with your belly button drawn to your spine, drop the belly with the crown of the tail. Exhale, press away from the mat, dome your back. Inhale, come back to that cow pose. Exhale, dome the back, cat pose. Imagine like a Halloween cat with all the hair sticking up on its back. Inhale for your cow. Exhale for your cat. Let's do one more full round of those. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Now, next time you inhale, I want you to come to a neutral spine. So just that same shape that we just discussed before we started the cat cows. So actively pressing away from the mat, belly button to spine. Then from here, on your next inhale, I want you to raise your left arm up into the left. Exhale, thread it underneath you. Come to rest on the top of your left shoulder, the left side of your face, and then maybe creep that right hand up, as long as that is not tweaking from the right shoulder. Exhale, bring the right hand back towards you. Inhale, press into the right hand, slowly begin to rise. Come back to your tabletop. Once you have your alignment where you want it, take a step back with the knees, maybe like six to eight inches. And then slowly lower to your belly. Come up onto your forearms. Forearms are gonna be parallel. And elbows should be about an inch or two in front of your shoulder points. Okay, sphinx pose. And what's crucial here is not to crank your neck to look at the horizon. Imagine that your neck is just an extension of your mid-back here. So very neutral, maybe even looking down, top of your mat. One more breath here. Exhale, forehead comes down, hands come to frame the chest. Press yourself back up to tabletop, but only for a moment. Bring your knees as wide as the mat, 
big toes together. Sink your hips back towards your heels. From here, on your next inhale, raise your right arm up and to the right. Exhale, thread it underneath you. Come to rest on the top of your right shoulder, the right side of your face. Maybe inchworm those left fingers up so that your arm is extended. On an exhale, draw your left hand back towards you. Inhale, press into the left hand. Begin to unthread and then walk back out to tabletop. Once again, knees are directly underneath hips. Hands are directly underneath shoulders, actively pressing away from the mat. Pull your belly button to your spine. Okay, second round of cat cows. Now you can begin to explore your range of motion a little bit more, okay? Inhale, drop the belly, lift the crown of the tail. Exhale, dome the back, press away from the mat. Inhale, cow. Maybe even pulling yourself forward here a little bit. Exhale, dome the back, maybe pressing backwards a little bit. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. So let's do one more round of that. And then after your final exhale and cat, inhale, come to that neutral spine. All right, neutral spine. Inhale, raise your right arm up and to the right. Exhale, thread it all the way underneath you. Rest on the top of the right shoulder, the right side of the face. Extend the left arm up overhead. And exhale, left hand comes back towards you. Press into the left hand on an inhale, slowly unwind. Come back to tabletop briefly. Take a step back with the knees, maybe six to eight inches. Lower to the belly. Come up onto forearms. Remember your elbows should be about two inches in front of your shoulder points here. Neck is neutral. Gaze is even slightly down. Exhale, forehead comes down towards the mat. Hands frame the chest. Press yourself up to tabletop. And then bring the knees wide, big toes together. Settle your hips back towards your heels. And then once again, on an inhale, raise the left arm up into the left. Exhale, thread it underneath you. Rest on the top of that shoulder left temple, and then extend the right arm up overhead. Exhale, draw the right hand back towards you. Inhale, press into the right hand, untwist, and then walk it back out to your tabletop. All right, tuck all ten toes, and you might need to reach back and get your littlest toes to participate. They like to shirk, at least mine do. And then once you have all 10 of your toes tucked, you can stay here if this is intense on the foot. If you need more sensation, you can start to press yourself up to a kneeling position. And once you're there, maybe take a shoulder roll, maybe you need a little wrist maintenance around the wrists quite a bit today. Um, and for now, what we're doing is we are targeting the plantar surface of the foot. We're gonna need that to be open when we attempt to execute downward facing dog. Okay? All right. So slowly begin to walk it back out if you were kneeling. Untuck the toes. Maybe pat the tops of the feet for a moment and get some circulation back in there. All right, here we go. On your next inhale, step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, and then heel toe it slightly closer to the midline so you come to a lunge stance. And here in our lunges, we always want to keep our knees at or behind our ankles. So we don't want to see this. That puts a lot of pressure on the front of the knee. Let's just avoid that. So every time you come into your lunge, just take an extra moment to check your alignment. Your knees are going to thank you. All right, here we are in our Anjane Asana. Inhale, raise the arms, raise the gaze. And exhale, hands come down. Scoot your left foot forward about two inches. On your next inhale, walk your hands back. Straighten your left knee, pull your left toes towards your nose and radiate your heart forward for Ardha Hanuman, your half monkey. So the point is not to try to get your nose to your knee here, it's to maintain wide collarbones, open heart. On an exhale, slowly walk the hands forward, bend the left knee, pull it back just a smidge. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Repeat the same thing, this is a drill. 
So you can move with the pace of your breath now, Ardha Hanuman. Exhale to come out of it. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. All right, left hand to the inside of the left foot. Peel your left knee back into that tabletop. And then from your tabletop, I want you to tuck your toes and lift your knees to come to a plank. So you might need to take a small step backwards. What we're going for here is once again, hands are directly underneath shoulders. Draw your belly button to your spine. You don't want to be dipping your booty or piking in here. Try to imagine there's a rod connecting your crown to your heels, okay? So from here, we're gonna take two more breaths, actively press away from the mat. Try not to sag. And then bring the knees down to the mat. Take a small step back, lower to the belly. Here we go. You're gonna extend your left arm away from you. Palm is face down. Press into your right hand to roll onto your left side. Broken wing. Opening up the left pec here a little bit. On an exhale, roll back to the belly. Here we go. Left hand comes to frame the chest. Right hand goes up overhead. Plant the palm on the floor. Roll to your right side. Here we go, opening up that lateral armpit. Exhale, roll to the belly. Hands come to frame the chest. Press yourself back up to tabletop. And then now we're gonna set up our Anahata Asana puppy pose, which is very ironic that puppy pose is a preparatory pose for downward facing dog, right? Puppy grows into a dog. So elbows come down to where your handprints just were. Keep your elbows just a little bit wider than your hands. And then the, what we're going for here is to bring your forehead down to the mat. So maybe take a little step back with the knees, keep the hips stacked over the knees, and bring the forehead down. One more breath here. Inhale, press into the hands. Slowly begin to rise as you inchworm your hands back. Take little steps with the knees. And come back to tabletop. All right, here we go again. Tabletop. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Heel toe it closer to the midline. Find that lunge stance. Check your alignment. Maybe scooch the foot forward a little bit so you don't overextend. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Scoot the right foot forward. Inhale, come into your Ardha Hanuman. Remember, open heart, chest is radiating forward. Exhale, come out of it. Draw the foot back. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, come into your Ardha Hanuman. Exhale, come out. Inhale, Anjana Asana. And exhale, hands come down. Right hand to the inside of the right foot. Peel your right knee back into your tabletop. And then make sure you have your alignment here. Hands are directly underneath shoulders. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, come to plank. Remember, pull your belly button to your spine. Lots of integrity here in the upper body as well. One more breath. Exhale, knees come down to the mat. Take a step back with the knees. Lower to your belly. This time, right arm extends away from you. Press into your left hand to roll up onto your right side. Broken wing. Exhale, roll back to the belly. Right hand comes to frame the chest. Left hand extends overhead, palm face down. Press into the right hand to roll onto your left side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Left hand comes to frame the chest. Press yourself up to tabletop. And then we're gonna set up that puppy pose again. Okay, elbows come down to where handprints just were. And then bring the elbows just a little bit wider than the hands. Begin to walk the knees back if you need to to bring your forehead down to the mat. Keep your hips stacked over your knees. One more breath here. On your next inhale, press into the hands. Begin to rise and then walk the knees forward, walk the hands back. Come to your tabletop. So that was our first flow. Now we're gonna add on to that. So we're starting out the same way. Step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. 
Heel toe it over, get your lunge stance. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, Ardha Hanuman. Exhale, come out of it. Inhale, rise. This should start to feel a little bit smoother now you, that you know what to expect. So kind of move with the natural rhythm of your breath here. Building some muscle memory. It's not all so new. Coordinating the breath to the movement and the movement to the breath. All right. So the next time you come to your lunge, inhale, rise. And then exhale, bring the hands down, but come to your fingertips. Okay. Tuck the right toes, lift the right knee. Coming to a fingertip lunge. Now I'm going to be extra careful with my left knee because I have a tweaky left knee. You're going to want to be more like this. I'm going to be back here. Okay. So keep the fingertips on the floor, and we're going to do cat cows from here. So inhale, smush your belly against your left thigh. Reach the crown. Exhale, dome the back, press in your fingertips. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Let's do one more round of those. All right, on your next inhale, come to a neutral spine. And then bring the right knee down to the mat. Untuck the right toes. Inhale, rise. Anjane Asana. And exhale, hands come down. Left hand to the inside of the left foot. Feel your left knee back into your tabletop. Get your alignment where you want it. And here we go again. Tuck all 10 toes. Lift the knees. Come to your plank. Make sure your hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Things are spread, fingers are spread wide. Pull your belly button to your spine. Okay, now we're gonna do a little down dog drill. So from here, you're gonna begin to press yourself back. Hips are gonna come up, but I'm not gonna lock out my knees. Bend the knees, press your hips back. It's like you're trying to make a butt print on the wall behind you, okay? Press the torso back, and then come back to plank. Here we go again, on an exhale, let's try this. Lift the hips, press your torso back, bend the knees, and keep pressing your torso towards your thighs. Come out of it. On an inhale, no, exhale, on an exhale, lift the hips up, press your torso back, bend those knees, and really sink the torso towards the knees. Okay, come back to your plank. Come down to your knees. Take a step back with the knees. Lower to the belly. You know where we're going. Extend your left arm away from you. Press into your right hand. Roll up onto your left side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Right arm reaches up overhead. Plant the right palm. Roll up to your right side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Hands come to frame the chest. Press yourself up to tabletop. But from here, adding on, you're going to step your left knee to the base of your left hand, right knee to the base of the right hand, up, cross the ankles, roll to your seat, and then roll flat on your back. You might need to scoot a little bit farther forward. Let's smash the mic. Okay. So from here, knees are bent, soles of the feet are planted on the mat, smush your shoulder blades underneath your upper back, and then draw your knees towards your chest and feet go up towards the ceiling. We are gonna pretend we're riding a bike, do a little bicycle drill here. So draw your belly button to your spine and imagine you're riding your bike uphill. So these are very slow circles, very slow. Your quads are feeling it, your quads have the power here. So in downward facing dog, the reason why we bend our knees is not just to protect the hamstrings, but it's also so we can load our quads, which are powerhouses, with the weight distribution. They handle the weight. So we need strong quads, we need awakened quads for our downward facing dog. Okay, we're getting to the top of the hill here. Make sure your belly button is to your spine. And now we're going downhill, so you're gonna pedal faster. Double time, okay? Let's keep this up for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, one. Draw both knees towards the chest. Maybe take a little rock side to side. Giving your abs some mercy. All right, rock and roll your way up to seated. Crisscross applesauce. Draw your feet back towards you. Roll over your knees, come to tabletop. You might need to scoot back a little bit. Knees are directly underneath hips. Hands are directly underneath shoulders. Now we're gonna set up that puppy once again, Anahata Asana. Okay, elbows come down to where handprints just were. Bring the elbows a little bit wide. Grip in the fingers. Maybe walk the knees back a smidge so that you can really draw your forehead down to the mat. Let's take one more breath here. Hips should be stacked over the knees. On your next inhale, press into the hands, slowly begin to rise. Take little steps with the hands, with the knees, to come back to your tabletop. All right, once you have that established, you know where we're going. Step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Heel toe, oh no, wait. Right foot. Step your right foot to the outside of the right hand. Heel toe that over. Check your alignment. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, arm one and one. Exhale, come out of it. Just move to the natural rhythm of your breath here. Inhaling as you come into a pose. Exhaling as you come out of it. Allowing that muscle memory to begin to kick in. You know where we're going. So just trust your body here. All right, the next time you come to your Anjane, your lunge, exhale, come out of it. Bring your hands down, but come to your fingertips. Tuck all 10 toes on the left side. Lift the left knee. Fingertip lunge. Inhale, smush your belly into your thigh. Exhale, dome the back. Inhale, smush. Exhale, dome. Inhale, smush. Exhale, dome. Inhale, come to a neutral spine. Ground the left knee, point the left toes. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. Right hand to the inside of the right foot. Peel your right knee back into your tabletop. Set it up nice and neat. And then tuck the toes and come to your plank. Draw your belly button to your spine here, actively pressing away from the mat. All right, here we go. On an exhale, that same drill. Begin to lift your hips up and back. Bend the knees. Press the torso back, okay? Butt front on the back wall. Lean forward, come to your plank. Begin to shift the hips up and back. Bend the knees. Press your torso back. Come back to plank. Let's do one last time. Okay, lift the hips up, shift them back, bend the knees, and press the torso back. All right, come back to plank. Come down to your knees. Take a step back with the knees. Lower to the belly. Extend the right arm away from you. Press into the left hand, roll onto the right side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Extend the left arm up overhead, plant the left palm. Roll onto the left side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Hands come to frame the chest. Press yourself up. And then we're gonna set up our puppy. Oh no, we're not. Take a step with the right knee to the base of the right hand. And then take a step with the left knee to the base of the left hand. Cross the ankles. Roll your seats. And then come to roll onto your back. Okay, knees are bent. Tuck the shoulder blades underneath the upper back. And then now draw the knees towards your chest and extend the feet from the ceiling. Okay. Now we're going to imagine we're pulling our bike backwards up a hill. We're going to reverse our circles. We're going to start slow. Okay. Draw your belly button to your spine. You have lots of engagement here. Quads are going to be doing the work here. Quads are awakening. to keep your circles as uniform as possible using mindful body awareness here not just breaking it out 
right, let's imagine we're riding our bike backwards down a hill. So now we're gonna go fast, double time. Try to maintain that integrity in the core, draw belly button to spine. Try to keep your circles somewhat uniform. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Draw the knees towards the chest. We find a little rock side to side. All right, here we go. Rock and roll your way up to seated. And then draw the feet towards you. Roll over the knees. Maybe take a step back here. Come back to your tabletop. Let's set up our Anahata Asana. Elbows come down to where the handprints just were. Elbows slightly wide. Make sure your fingers can grip into the mat. And then as the forehead sinks down towards the mat, maybe walk the knees back a little bit. Keep the hips stacked over the knees. One more breath here. Really feel this opening in the lats, the outer armpits, maybe even some peck in there. All right, inhale. Press into the hands, slowly begin to rise. Small steps with the hands, with the knees. Come back to tabletop. All right, now you step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Find your lunge stance. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down, you know the drill. Inhaling to come into a pose. Exhaling to come out of it. This is what vinyasa is all about. Coordinating movement to breath and breath to movement. Okay? Let's do one more round wherever you are. Now that you know what you're doing. All right. The next time you come to your Anjane Asana, inhale, rise. Exhale, come down to fingertips, remember? Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee. I'm gonna be a little funky with my left one here, so you're gonna be wanna be maybe like right here, I'm gonna be back here, okay? Fingertips stay on the mat, inhale, smush. Exhale, dome the back. Inhale, cow. Good, exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, neutral spine. Here we go. Ground the right knee, point the right toes. Inhale, rise. But exhale, hands come to hips. We're adding on. Okay, with hands on hips, once you straighten your left knee and bring the left knee 90 degrees to the left. Okay, so if this is a clock face, I just went from 12 and now I'm at nine. Okay, I want your toes to be pointing forward not toes pointing away from you. I don't like what that does to the knee. So, toes are pointing forward. Sole of the foot is against the floor. Draw your belly button to your spine. Maybe tuck your tail a little bit. Arms come to a T. We're gonna do a little modified dancing warrior. So, flip the right palm face up. Scoop to the right. Land your left hand on your left leg. Either reach the right fingertips for the ceiling or for an utita arm. Bring your right hand to the front of your right shoulder, aim, fire, shoot past your right here, reaching to the left. Remember not to collapse here, just like when we were in our seated um, side bends. Draw your belly button to your spine. On an inhale, windmill back up to your T. Flip the left palm face up, scoop to the left and up, land your right fingertips on the floor. Either reach those left fingertips up to the ceiling, or bring the left hand to the front of the left shoulder, aim, fire, shoot past your left ear, reaching, reaching to the right. Strong belly on your next inhale, windmill back up to vertical. Here we go. Flip the right palm face up, scoop, land the left hand, either stay here or aim, fire, reach to the left. Inhale, come back to vertical. Flip the left palm, left palm face up. Scoop to the left and up. Land the right fingertips. Either reach for the ceiling with those left fingertips or uchita arm, reach to the right. Strong belly, inhale, windmill back up to vertical. And then collect your left knee back into like a kneeling position, directly underneath your left hip. And then arms come out in front of you, double high five. 
Draw your belly button to your spine, dome your back, then pounce to tabletop. All right, from here, you're going to take a step back with the knees. No, you're not. You're gonna tuck all 10 toes and come to plank. All right, draw belly button to spine, actively press away from the mat. Arms are a little tired now. Don't forget this integrity here. And uh, a good point here is, you know how you have like those little armpits on your elbows on the inside? Twist your elbow pits to the front of the mat as much as you can. That's gonna give you a lot of integrity in the elbow, okay? All right, so from here, we're doing our little down dog drill. Lift the hips up and back, but what do you do with your knees? You bend them. Press the torso towards the thighs. Inhale, come back to plank. Let's coordinate the breath here. Exhale, lift the hips up and back, bend the knees. Press the torso away. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lift the hips up and back. Bend the knees, press the torso back. Last time, let's do it. All right, inhale, come back to plank. Bring the knees down. Now you step it back. Lower to the belly. Left hand extends away from you. Press into the right hand, roll on the left shoulder. Left side body. Exhale, roll to the belly. Right arm reaches up overhead. Roll to the right side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Hands come to frame the chest. Press yourself up to tabletop. And then here we go. We're gonna skip the bicycle drill because we're done with that. But I want us to try a transition from puppy to down dog. Okay, Anahata Asana, puppy pose to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So here, it's pivotal that you're not off of your mat with your hands here. Make sure your fingers can grip. Elbows are slightly wider than the hands. Let's bring the forehead down to the mat. Keep the hips stacked over the knees as much as you can. But now, straighten the arms. Melt the chest just a little bit farther down. Tuck all 10 toes. Might take a moment to get them all tucked and then begin to lift the hips up and back to down dog. Maybe walk the hands back, feet forward. Experiment with your stance here because a long stance is gonna make you wanna walk your knees out. And it's gonna be this awful sliding, like ah, sliding off my mat. But if your stance is too short, then you're gonna end up in like this really weird, almost forward fold. So experiment with your stance here. What were those foundational things that we've just been working on. Knees are bent, torso is not out here, it's magnetically pressed, it's drawn towards the thighs, and the hips are up and back, okay? Downward facing dog, and from here, if you have open hamstrings, you can definitely begin to straighten the legs a little bit, but let's go do the hip. This is beginners. All right, downward facing dog. Bring the knees down to the mat. Come back to your tabletop. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Heel toed over. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down. You know the drill. Inhale, heart of Hanuman. Exhale, come out of it. Inhale, rise. Exhale, come down. Inhale, into your half monkey. Exhale, to come out of it. Inhale, rise. Here we go, exhale, fingertips come to the mat. Tuck the left toes, lift the left knee. Come to your fingertip lunge. Inhale, smush the belly to side. Radiate the heart forward. Exhale, dome the back. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Let's do one more round. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, neutral spine. Ground the left knee, point the left toes. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come down to hips. Straighten the right knee. Bring your right leg 90 degrees to the right, just like we did on the other side. And your toes are pointing straight ahead, not out to the side, okay? So from here, engage your core, belly button to spine, tuck your tail a little bit. Bring the arms to a T. Flip the left palm face up, scoop to the left and up. Land your right hand on your right leg. Reach either for the ceiling with the left fingertips or left hand in the front of the left shoulder. Aim fire 
shoot past the ear and reach to the right. Remember not to collapse here. Inhale, strong core. Come back to vertical. Put the lower right, palm face up, skip, <laughs> scoop to the right, then up, land the left fingertips. Reach the right fingertips for the ceiling or Uchita arm. Extend and reach towards the left. Strong belly, inhale. Bring the torso back to vertical. Let's do it one more time. Flip the left palm face up, scoop to the left and up. Reaching, reaching. Bring the torso back to vertical. Flip the right palm face up, scoop to the right and up. Land those left fingertips, either reaching for the ceiling or your Utita arm. Inhale, strong belly. Torso comes back to vertical. Collect your right knee into like a kneeling position directly under your right hip. Bring the hands out in front of you, double high five. Draw your belly, lift your spine, dome your back, and pounce to tabletop. All right, from here, tuck the toes. Come to your plank. Plank like you mean it. Hands are directly underneath the shoulders. Twist those elbow pits to the front of the mat. Draw your belly button to your spine. Downward facing dog drill. Lift the hips up and back. What do you do with those knees? You bend them. Press the torso towards the thighs. And then come back to plank. Let's coordinate the breath here, right? This is vinyasa, Dana. So exhale. Lift the hips up and back. Do your thing. Inhale to come out of it to plank. Exhale, lift the hips up and back. Bend the knees, press the torso back. Inhale to come to plank. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, back to plank. Bring the knees down to the mat. Take a step back with the knees. Lower to the belly. Right arm shoots away from you. Press into the left hand. Roll onto the right side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Left hand reaches up overhead. Roll onto the left side. Exhale, roll to the belly. Hands frame the chest. Press yourself up to tabletop. Here we go. The puppy's gonna become a dog. Bring the elbows down to the mat where your handprints just were. Make sure you can grip on your mat with your fingertips. Maybe walk the knees back a smidge. Press the heart down, press the forehead down. Now lock the elbows. Still having that radiating draw of the chest down to the mat. Tuck all 10 toes as best you can. It might be hard. Grip at the fingertips. Lift the hips up and back. Here we go. Do we want our stance shorter? With generously bent knees so you don't feel like you're slipping off of your mat? Or maybe you're too short and you're like, this is a very awkward forward fold. Step the feet back. Here are our principles of downward facing dog. Bend the knees, press the torso towards the thighs, and lift the hips up and back. Make a butt print on the wall behind you. Come to a place of stillness. Let's do two breaths here. All right, knees come down to the mat. Okay, step your left knee to the base of your left hand. Right knee to the base of your right hand, cross the ankles, roll to your seat, and then, thank goodness, roll to your back, draw your knees to your chest, little knee hug here. Maybe find a gentle rock side to side. Sometimes it feels nice to keep the knees close together here, or if you want to bring the knees wide, that can feel good too. Go ahead and release the soles of the feet back down to the mat. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath your upper back. And then press into both feet evenly so you can lift your hips up just about an inch. You don't have to oh, go into a bridge or anything. But just about an inch. Shift your hips way over to the left. Set them back down to the mat. Drop both knees into the chest. Guide this full shape over to the right. Land it. Knees are stacked and then open up the arms to a T. Now, this is Yogi's choice for the neck. Some people prefer to look to the right, which can be a little more gentle on the neck. Some prefer to look up at the ceiling, or some prefer to look to the left, opposite direction, kind of to accentuate the twist that's going on in the spine here. 
Now that we're in our cool down, you're welcome to employ that belly breath. This is where we chill out. It's okay to have a more depressive, relaxing breath. Let's take one more breath here and the supine twist. All right, bring your right hand underneath your right thigh. Draw your belly button, your spine a little bit. Help your knees back up to vertical. Shimmy your hips back into the middle of the mat. Then draw your knees towards your chest. Extend your feet towards the ceiling. Now, this has to do with what your knees are telling you to do. Most people for a happy baby are gonna reach their hands up to the outsides of their feet and draw their armpits down. Twinkie, Twinkie left me right now, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna reach up and grab my ankles. I'm gonna keep my knees kind of close together. But for you, you might bring the knees wide, pull the feet down. I'm gonna be careful with my knee here. So find a little rock side to side, unless you feel like you're gonna tip over, in which case nobody can see you anyway, so it's not a deal. Have fun with it. Take one more breath here, and a happy baby. All right, slowly release the feet back down to the mat. Soles of the feet are planted, knees are bent. Smush your shoulder blades underneath your upper back. And then once again, press into both feet evenly. Lift your hips up just about an inch. Shift them way over to the right. Set them back down. Draw both knees into the chest. And then you're gonna guide the knees over to the left, land the right knee stacked on top of the left. If your knees feel weird here, open up. You don't have to keep an extreme angle here. And then open up the arms to T. Find what feels good with your neck. Where does it feel good to look? Send the breath down into the belly if that serves you. Thank you. 